So I'm going to talk about PWM switching technology and the Zenus Edge filter and good cabling, grounding, shielding. And why do I care about this? Well, when you're renting this room for $10,000 a day from UL, uh, then you want to make sure you've got the tools handy to make sure you pass. And uh, if we take a look at uh, the, one of the critical factors uh, that we miss with the PWM amplifier is that the output, of course, is PWM. And it's driving the motor and there's some cable capacitance and then there's some Miller capacitance. Um, there's a whole article on this uh, on the web, uh, Google Dean Crumlish and Noise, and you'll get uh, minimizing uh, PWM servo uh, noise. Uh, there's a whole paper on it here, and uh, we talk in great detail about what it is and why you see it. And um, we talk about the, uh, the Zenus Edge filter. and uh, you know, that's that's one thing that uh, Copley makes, you know, if, if it's difficult to clean up the cabling, grounding, shielding, or if you have a very sensitive uh, application like ultrasonic scanning and you need something like this, then, you know, instead of buying an analog amplifier, you can use a PWM amplifier. Um, if we look at the rise time of a PWM signal, uh, the Copley takes about 150 nanoseconds to go from zero to high voltage. And then uh, that's just the rise time from 10 to 90%. Um, if I look at uh, the competitor, what frequency would that be? Um, so there's a rule of thumb, 0.35 divided by the 10 to 90% rise time. And so a competitor that you know, it has a 20 nanosecond rise time, uh, E minus nine, uh, will give you frequencies in the almost 20 megahertz range. And so if you're trying to keep that frequency range down, of course, don't use the competitor's drives. Um, but the Copley drive, you know, also has uh, high switching frequencies. Uh, a square wave is uh, some of the ARD harmonics through the Fourier analysis. Um, but if we divide that by the 150, E minus nine, uh, we can see that we have a two megahertz kind of range. So the, high, the faster the switching frequency, the, the more uh, distribution of the higher frequency noise you'll see, it's the odd harmonics. And so there's components that, you know, three, five, seven times this. Um, so the advantage of a filter is to slow the rise time down, and you can see it, the edge filter with a quiescent frequency of about 100 uh, kilohertz still allows the uh, square to come through. It's just, it's slowed down. And so the first stage is uh, 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 differential uh, filter. Uh, common mode, and then the, the second stage is, I'm sorry, the second stage is differential edge filter, and then the first stage is a common mode choke. And so you can see a common mode choke here, uh, used at the output of the drive, and then there's these ferrite beads, and then there's a reference design for a DC powered drive, but this is for the, uh, the AC powered drive. So we're going to take a look at the uh, PWM switching frequency here. Um, I'm going to go through the elements here. I've got the drive who's out. It's powered by 120 volts AC rectified to uh, square root of 2, 120 rectified to 165. And then the motor output here goes to the motor uh, case. I've got earth on the drive case in green back there. I, I didn't ground the motor case, but there's a connection through the shield. You should ground this by bolting it to the frame. Uh, if you're failing for emissions and immunity, uh, a lot of people run around with these ferrites and clamp them on the cables, you know, at the drive, a short distance from the drive, at the motor, uh, wherever noise is coming out of something. Um, this is an edge filter for a 480 volt, uh, does 40 amps, uh, it's, it's a much larger. This is a Copley Zenus edge filter, uh, it's sized for 120 or 240 and works with the Zenus. Uh, conveniently labeled for coming from the amplifier going to the motor with connectors 
um, and you, it's easy to connect this into the system at the output of the drive, so located at the drive. Um, this is an example of a, uh, a, a common mode choke. I just took a ferrite ring and did like five turns at the output of the motor uh, before I went, you know, it's like a foot of cable uh, to wind this up. Um, this is also uh, a, a filter. This is the poor man's filter, right? It's uh, just a drum core with some inductance. You three of these at the output of the drive and you've got yourself the poor man's filter. Um, this is uh, another uh, iron core filter, but this one can do like 50 amps. So uh, it's a little bit bigger. If you ever have a motor that's like 50 microhenries, you might want to add a couple of these to bring the minimum up to at least 100 microhenries. 200 would be better, but anything less than 100 microhenries, you're in like a like a printed circuit motor, you're in danger of a short circuit. Um, we can see on the oscilloscope here uh, a PWM action. I can see this would be zero volts here. Uh, the switching frequency is 16 kilohertz and you have a 62.5 microsecond period and from zero it pulses up to 165 and then back down it's a very narrow pulse so it's only producing maybe a microsecond of pulse we're we're in a servo loop we're trying to control the current plus or minus 10 milliamps or less on some drives and so the pulse width will vary this is a modulation technique called zero to 100 percent and you can see, you know, it's it's a little jittery as we're servoing. So, you know, there's no such thing as zero. It's always plus or minus a little bit. Um, so just to give you the, the concept conceptual idea of this, uh, you got a uh, amplifier with a DC bus and a high voltage output uh, to a motor. This is just a two wire motor or a coil. Maybe it's a brush motor. Um, and I adjust the pulse width on one side to 10%. I leave the other side at zero. It's never zero. There's always a little bit of plus or minus something on it. But um, the idea is that uh, if you had 10% of the 24 volt bus, you'd get 2.4 volts across the motor to compensate for back EMF or IR drop or inductive reactance. And but the, this is more positive than zero. So the current flows this way. And then if we flip it around on the H bridge, this is more positive than zero and the current flows that way. So voltage or pulse width produces a command uh, for current and then we measure the current, close the loop. Uh, so that's the zero to 100% modulation technique. And there's another uh, technique, you know, that one's good for zero being quiet, but this one's good for reducing the ripple current, right? So really low inductance, high ripple current, uh, we'll talk about that some more in a minute. But the basic idea is when you have both sides switching at the same time, you get no current. And then uh, as one pulse gets uh, smaller and the other one gets bigger, you get more voltage potential from up here to down here. This is like 100% minus 10, minus 10 is 80% differentially. So 80% of say 100 volts, that's 80 volts across your motor. So current is definitely flowing this way and the motor is definitely spinning fast to produce back EMF and IR drop and inductive compensation. Um, I have a little bit more on the ripple current, but that's when you when you double your PWM frequency by doing center weighted, you cut this in half. So your ripple current goes up half as much. Uh, that's the DIDT is the voltage over the inductance. And then the current times the resistance, uh, this waveform, the RMS of a triangular waveform is one over the square root of three. So one half of that uh, times the voltage over the inductance plus the little change in time there, which is now cut in half because you had doubled, you did center weighted. So worst case is when you're at half voltage across the motor. You normally, you don't see any ripple when you're at zero or at full speed. It's only somewhere in between that. Um, but I do want to show you uh, the pulse width as we're adjusting uh, in CME. On the current loop screen, uh, we have a checkbox for on or checked is 100% modulation technique and off is uh, center weighted. And we'll take a look, what does that look like? 
So now I've got a uh, square wave going here. Uh, there's zero current being commanded. So the same square wave on both sides produces no current. Uh, when I check that, it switches the modulation technique to 100% modulation technique. So zero is a very small pulse width. Um, this is, uh, if you're near zero, this maybe it's a little less switching near zero. So that's a benefit. Uh, when, when this is doing its thing, it's constantly switching, but you know, I hear less noise audibly when I do center weighted. I hear a little more noise uh, audibly when I check this box, but that really depends on, you know, what noise are we trying to go after here? Uh, there's a, a 100 and, 120 volts AC being rectified. There's some ripple. Uh, you could get injected into the system when we're doing the not clamped. When the bus is not clamped, it's free to float. That's space vector modulation, and you're you're going to not constrain the zero, and it's going to float around. So if you have ripple coming in on your bus, it feeds right through to the motor. So you know maybe there's some 120 kilohertz uh, rectified uh, full wave rectified line noise coming through the motor, but you know, that's something you maybe see in the current loop rather than hear it audibly, but it's subjective here. So not much, not a big difference. Um, there's, a, there's, you know, the output is hot, right? Like you can't touch, you can't touch the AC output on this drive because it's hot, right? So there's 120 Hertz uh, rectified line uh, going on here. And you to get to the switching, you really got to, you got to zoom it in. Right, so um, that's a little bit interesting. I'm going to go back to the uh, the center 100% uh, modulation technique because that's classic kind of PWM understanding. And then I'm going to jog it right. So so there's a small current, plus or minus like 10 milliamps or something. Um, you know, when you go slow, you get low back EMF. When you go fast, you're going to get high back EMF. So let's let's run it. So now you can see. I'm at 1,000 RPM. I'm using up about half of the, the bus voltage for pulse width. You can also see that it goes from 50% uh, down to like 1%. Uh, that is the, um, we're making a sine wave to the motor. So I'm just measuring one output, the U output, right? And so the pulse width varies as you make a sine wave. The voltage increases as you go faster. Uh, I don't even know if I can go this fast, but let's try it. Ah, here we go. We're running out of pulse width. Eventually we won't be able to do it. Ah, uh, there it is. So let's try 3000. So when, when you run out of pulse width, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, I got, uh, I got a following air fault. Darn it. Yeah, you can't go that fast with this motor. You, this is a Japanese 200 volt AC motor, so you need uh, 200 volts AC going in. Single or three phase will be fine, uh, but just keep your speeds down to the reasonable expectation, plus an IR drop and inductive comp and stuff, and you'll have some pulse width left. Um, so that's uh, that's the basic there for the PWM. Uh, we can see the stuff about the ripple here. Uh, it's it's a power. Uh, if you had a really low inductance and a very high, uh, a very high uh, 